Monday morning. I'm MPJ and this is Fun Fun Function. In last Monday's episode, we explored the JavaScript prototype. I got a lot of comments on this asking, how does this relate to factory functions? And factory functions is a video I made a couple of weeks ago. So we're gonna spend this episode thinking about when to use a factory function and when do we wanna use prototype. And it basically comes down to your performance needs. Factory functions are more flexible and they are easier to reason about. But if you need extreme performance, the prototype might be something that you want to look at. Since it will be a cost, you will be lowering uh, how, how easy it is to reason uh, about your code and how flexible it is. We're also going to look at what do we mean by extreme performance in this case. I think that factory functions is a great default choice. Factory functions are so flexible, they allow you to create objects in any way you want, including private properties and all that good stuff. Secondly, I think that factory functions are really easy to understand because they use so few concepts. A factory function is just a normal function that creates an object. As long as somebody understands closures, they can read your code and understand it. Since a factory function is just dealing with object literals and closures, there's not a lot of moving parts. Factory functions doesn't use the this keyword, which means that you don't have the issue of uh, this changing value depending on context, which means that you don't have to do any messing around with bind to keep that in context. Factory functions, very simple, robust, flexible, easy to reason about. Prototypes have less of all those things, but prototypes have great performance. Before we talk about that though, I want to show you this week's discovery that doesn't have anything to do with programming at all. I found this Kingdom Builder. We were playing, uh, we're having a board game night this weekend, and this is just an amazing game. I really, really like it. It made, it's made by Donald X Vachabra, and he is, uh, he's the guy that designed. Um, uh, the Dominion card game, if you've seen it. I found out about Kingdom Builder through the amazing uh, YouTube show uh, Tabletop by Will Wheaton, which you should watch. Anyway, objects made with prototypes are created slightly faster and they use slightly less memory. So if you find yourself in a situation where you need to create tons and tons and tons of objects, it might be a good idea to sacrifice the benefits of the factory function and just go for creating objects using the prototype instead. But when I say tons of objects, I actually mean tons of objects. I actually don't mean that because they are non-physical objects living inside a computer and don't weigh anything. Let's have a pop quiz and evaluate what you have learned so far. If you are creating 10,000 items per second, should you use the prototype or factory functions? If you answered prototypes, you are wrong! 10,000 items is nothing. We're living in the future, computers inside the cheapest mobile phone, and all the major JavaScript engines are amazingly fast. Um, I really like this quote by uh, Vegoro. Often devs still approach performance of JS code as if they are riding a horse cart, but the horse had long been replaced with a fusion reactor. Now, if you have an app that creates 10,000 items per frame, not per second, per frame, then you need prototypes, then we're talking. Well, maybe you need them. If you are creating 10,000 items per frame, you might indeed need to create objects really fast. But before you do, you should really ask yourself, is the problem maybe that I'm creating 10,000 items per frame in the first place? The answer to that question might actually be no, you might need to create that many objects. But it is really important that you attack the performance characteristics of your actual algorithm, not nuances of it like object creation. That is a few thoughts on when to use a prototype and when to use a factory function. Factory functions are a little bit more robust, a bit more easy to reason about and more flexible. But if you need extreme performance, actually need it, then the prototype is a better choice. It's super important to not search for the ultimate tool. I know I nag about this a lot on this channel, but it is really important. 
factory functions and prototypes is such a great example of a situation that you often end up in as a programmer where you have a, uh, a flexible tool that is very simple and robust and you have a fast tool which is not as flexible and robust. And it's very important that you actually only sacrifice the flexibility of this tool if you actually need this speed. You're going to need both of these tools in your toolbox, the flexible tool and the fast tool. But you should wait to throw away your flexibility until you know that you have to. If you don't know about the performance characteristics of your application, go with the flexible tool until you do. If you try to predict the future and say that, yeah, this, this part of my code, that this is definitely going to be slow, I should use a fast tool here. If you do that, you are not a computer scientist, you are, you're no better than the person writing horoscopes next to the funny pages. Use the flexible tool until you find out what parts of your app are actually slow in real life, and then, and only then, you break out the fast tool. I am MPJ, this is Fun Fun Function, until next Monday morning, stay curious.